Hey there, my dear friend. It has been quite some time since I saw you last and I will tell you all about it in a minute. But first, I just want to thank you for being here. As I'm filming this video, this channel has 640 subscribers, which is just insane. I was totally expecting just to be posting videos into the void, speaking to no one at all, but here you are. It really means a ton to me that you're here, so thank you again. So today I'm going to crochet a coaster, give you a little bit of a life update, and then answer some of the questions that you asked on my community page and on Instagram. For the coaster, I'm going to be crocheting this chart, which I found on Pinterest, and I have no idea how big it's going to be, but it's going to be fine. So the first question I got, which is actually two questions, is how are you and what's your favorite flower? I'm okay. This month has been insane. So at the beginning of the month, I went to the Contemporary Handweavers of Texas conference because I was the vendor chair, which just means that I essentially coordinated the entire shopping portion of the conference. I planned on bringing my crochet top project and filming that whole thing while I was at the conference, but that just didn't work out. I was way too busy with the conference and frankly, very embarrassed to be filming a video outside of the comfort of this room. So it just didn't happen. Then, content warning. Immediately when I got home from the conference, I found out that my cousin, who is only about a year and a half older than me, who I was very close with and loved dearly, passed away. And that has been really, really hard. Really, really hard. I filmed a whole video about that, but honestly, it's just way too sad. I don't want to go back and edit it. I'm sure that you don't want to hear it. So it's just going to live on my computer until I get the nerve to delete it, and then it will be gone. But just know that this isn't my first rodeo with loss. Unfortunately, I have experienced this several times before, and I know what it looks like to come out on the other side, and I'm getting better every day. And then, as if things couldn't get any worse, a big storm blew through and knocked out our electricity for an entire week. We're really fortunate that we have a decent amount of family within driving distance, so we just bounced around from house to house for a week. But like I said, I am incapable of filming anywhere other than here at this point, so I didn't get anything done. I am so happy to be back in my own home with air conditioning and lights, and I hope to pick up where I left off and keep posting every five to seven business days like I was before all of this mess happened. So how am I on a scale one to 10? I'd say a solid seven. And part two to this question, what is my favorite flower? For years, I have always said that it's a stargazer lily, but recently I discovered the royal sunset lily, and I think that that one takes the cake. What is my favorite animal? This is an easy one if you have known me in person, but it is obviously bunnies. Usually people say they're like a dog person or a cat person, but I am definitely a bunny person. I love their personality and their temperament, and I also get easily spooked, so we're a good match. And they're so cute! My husband thinks that ducks are the cutest animal, but I have to say it's bunnies for me. What is your favorite thing to make? This is probably not the kind of answer you were expecting, but I think it's to make people happy. I am very much a people pleaser and I just want everyone to be happy and comfortable. It's also impossible for me to pick what physical thing I like to make or what type of hobby I like to do the most because I go through phases and I always want to learn new stuff. I can't really do one type of thing or the same thing over and over or else I get really bored. For example, I started making these earrings to sell and I wove probably three or four hundred pairs of them and now the thought of sitting down to weave those earrings makes me want to vomit. So I can't do it. Which is exactly why I started doing this YouTube thing because I like to watch people learn new skills, and I know that you do too, because you wouldn't be here if you didn't. I'm trying to pace myself so I don't finish the questions before the coaster or vice versa. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. This is what I have so far. What's your favorite color? If I had to pick just one, it would definitely be terracotta, but I'm obsessed with all of the colors that give off like desert sunset vibes. I also really love dyeing things and working with color theory, and so I can see a purpose for almost every single color, except for maybe chartreuse. I have a grudge against chartreuse for some reason. I really like this next one. It's what's your favorite mug to drink from? And I have an answer for that. And I also have an answer for what's my favorite mug in general. And those are two different mugs. My favorite mug to drink from is this Guinness mug, partially because I really like Guinness, but also this has sentimental value and the size and shape are just perfect. I got this mug at a thrift store in some town in Colorado on a trip I went on with one of my best friends, Dallas. It was right when we graduated college in 2020, we took a road trip to stay at a campsite on a mountain, and it was an amazing experience. 
Definitely one of my favorite core memories. The next one is this handmade bug that my husband got me for one of my birthdays. I think by a guy in Colorado, actually. It's got this really cool twisted handle detail and it's just so cute. Look at that ladybug. And the doorknob. I prefer to drink out of this one mostly because it's much bigger and I like to have a big cup of tea, but also I am terrified of breaking this mug. And just because I don't want this one to feel left out, this one was a gift from my mother-in-law. Okay, this next question kind of makes me feel like you're asking me to do your homework for you, like you've got a discussion forum and you need to reply to at least two other students and cite your sources. The question is, do you think AI will increase the value of studio art? And my answer is, ah, but probably not. I think value is a really strange thing and it's hard to predict, especially when it comes to things like studio art because it's already only highly valued by a small subset of people. Of course, I viewed this issue through a very specific lens because I am a textile person. So the way that I'm thinking about it is kind of similar to the way that the Industrial Revolution completely changed textile production. It used to be that every piece of cloth you had was made by someone on a loom or a knitting machine or knitting by hand or crocheting. Now knitting machines and looms are automated and so we can mass produce these textiles. But Crochet can't be replicated by a machine. We already have mass-produced art at big box stores and print-on-demand shops on Etsy. I think that this is just an extension of that. People will always value handmade things, but I don't think that more mass production is going to increase that value. I also don't think that AI art is going to make human-made art more rare. Unlike pre-industrial revolution textiles, studio art is not made for utilitarian necessity. Artists aren't hearing about AI-generated art and thinking, oh, thank God I don't have to do this work anymore. I hope that there was an actual answer in there. It's so hard for me to remember what I've said when I have to do several takes because I can't string together a full sentence. Do you like to mix mediums or work on them separately? This is a good one because I really do love the idea of mixing mediums. I have a bunch of ideas for projects floating around in my head that combine different crafts and hobbies that I do, but I have a massive fear of failure that I haven't managed to get over yet, so it's very hard for me to start on things that I haven't seen anyone do before. I will say that it is very unfortunate to be the kind of person who always wants novelty and is also scared to try new things. This next question came up twice and it's, do you have any other hobbies that you haven't shown on YouTube? Absolutely, yes. There's a lot of fiber arts related hobbies that I haven't shown on the channel yet. I haven't shown any actual weaving. I haven't spun any yarn or dyed anything. When I was younger, I used to be super into making friendship bracelets and bead weaving with those big chunky plastic beads. I also made a lot of things with the fusible perler beads and I did a little bit of cross stitch. Two hobbies that I have now that probably won't make an appearance on this channel are motorcycles and photography and the combination thereof. Oh, I also really like to read. Last year I read over 50 books and I had a goal to read 75 this year and I have read a total of maybe six. There's just not enough time for everything. Okay, my neighbor's car alarm was going off for way too long, so I turned off the video, ate dinner, and I worked a little bit more on this because I think I was going too slow. This is what I've got so far. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's just kind of okay. Maybe I'll feel better about it when it's finished. The next two questions are kind of related. They're what inspires your video ideas and what's your process for coming up with new ideas? I'm assuming the last one is in general. As for how I come up with ideas in general, that's kind of a hard question to answer because I think a lot of the times ideas just pop up and I don't know where they came from. But sometimes I can tell how I got to an idea. For the AI crochet video, it was kind of just a logical progression of asking ChatGPT for stuff, seeing what it can do, and thinking, oh, I bet it could probably do AI crochet. And a lot of my project ideas come from a place sort of like that where I try to take two things and combine them in a new way. So I've had this idea in my head for a while about dyeing yarn in such a way that when it's woven it makes a picture. So that just stemmed from me thinking about analog photography, printmaking, and like printing on a printer, how the colors stack on top of each other to make an image, and how that could be translated to woven cloth. And then when I get an idea like that I kind of like to follow the thread and then thinking about what the meaning behind that would be. So that idea of weaving an image in that way brings up the questions of like what you can embed into cloth and what cloth can contain. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> 
And for the YouTube videos, it mostly just stems from things I want to do for myself. I bought the knitting machine because I wanted it. Then I took it apart and cleaned it because I had to, but I filmed a video of that. I wanted to learn how to make socks, so I filmed a video of that. Wanted to learn how to make a hat, filmed a video. Also, for the next video that's going to come out, I had been wanting to make this very specific crochet top for a long time, and being able to film it just gave me that little bit of extra motivation to get started on the project. The next question is where should I start getting into textiles? And I'm kind of biased on this one. Technically, I got started with cross stitch and those little macrame friendship bracelets when I was younger, but I really got serious about it when I learned how to crochet. Crochet is a great beginner textile craft to get into because there's a lot of information online about it. You only need to know a couple of stitches and you can make anything you want. And also the materials and supplies are readily available and super affordable compared to some other fiber crafts like weaving. But it really all depends on what kind of thing you want to make. If you're thinking about making very thin fabric that you can cut and sew into garments, maybe crochet isn't the thing. If you want to make a pair of socks, maybe knitting's your deal. It really depends. And trust me, once you learn one craft, you're going to want to learn all of them. So just think about the thing you want to make right now and learn the craft that you need in order to make that thing. What's your favorite tea? I go through phases, but right now it is Lipton Green Tea Orange Passion Fruit Jasmine. I am obsessed with this tea. I think that it's my favorite of all time, but I have been equally in love with one they used to make. I think it was Lipton it was white peach and mango steen. It was very good and it came in like a little pyramid shaped bag. I also really like Earl Grey and Tazo lemon loaf tea. I think that's a very good herbal tea. I have tried a lot of teas and this one Earl Grey and Tazo lemon loaf are my go-to favorites. This next question is also a really tough one. It's how do you visualize what you're creating? And to me that's kind of like asking me how do I breathe? I don't know really. I don't try. It just happens. I think I have a pretty good mind's eye so I can see shapes and objects in my head and rotate them in three dimensions and add and remove parts. I daydream a lot so my actual vision will be completely turned off and I'll just be living in whatever brain space is creating the thing I'm thinking about. A lot of times I don't think that what I visualize is really well rooted in reality. It's kind of dreamlike or kind of how when AI generates an image that's supposed to look really realistic but it just is off a little bit. I think that's what it's like. Okay, I'm realizing that I'm not even crocheting, I'm just talking, so I'm gonna finish the questions and then I'll show you what this looks like at the end. The next question is, who is your favorite Zelda character? And I have to say that I've only played Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but the answer is easy peasy Hestu all day. I love him. Next up is a doozy. It's, what are your thoughts on the fast fashion industry or mass manufacturing in general? Not good thoughts. Really bad thoughts. I hate waste and the exploitation of living beings, and mass manufacturing seems to thrive on those things. Of course, not always. There are certifications a company can get to prove they're more sustainable, like a cradle to cradle certification or a certified B Corp. Although these things are not perfect, they're a really good step in the right direction. This is a really hard issue to talk about, especially because a lot of the people that purchase fast fashion or mass manufactured things are people that can't necessarily afford to buy things that are made more slowly or more sustainably. It's easy to say vote with your dollar when you have a lot of dollars. I think at this point most people know that fast fashion is bad for the health of ourselves and our planet and it's just gonna take some work and some time to get things changed for the better. Last question. Do you know the Muffin Man? No, I do not. All right, that's all for me today. I will put the finished coaster somewhere on the screen. Thank you so much for subscribing and sticking around and I will see you in the next video.